So the Logic Pro 11 update is out and I'm gonna be sharing with you two things that I absolutely love about this Logic Pro update. <sighs> and one thing towards the end that is really annoying me. But let's start with the positives. The first of which is the Chroma Glow plugin. Let's jump straight into this. <laughs> Do you know what? This squeeze is sounding delicious. Oh my days. Retro tube, modern tube, they sound great. They sound exciting. I really like those. But this squeeze is like saturation and compression. And when I'm blending it with the wet dry, it just sounds so good. Logic, you actually outdid yourself here. I'm not sure who you've employed, or what new talent you have over at Logic right now, but they are actually really good at what they're doing because this plugin is really well thought out. You have a low cut and then you have a high cut and you can put it pre or post saturation, which is really great for tonal shaping. But in addition to that, having a mix wet dry and then a bypass below, which means anything below this set frequency won't be affected. This is really well thought out and the selections you've given us of tone are really tasteful. I mean, this squeeze is really nice, but let's check out this. Do you know what? Before I do anything, I'm saving that and then we'll check out the analog preamp as well. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so it feels like it's rolling off the top end and just giving it that kind of analog grip to it. But for me so far, my favorite has got to be this modern tube, the retro tube and squeeze. That squeeze, that squeeze is special. This feels like what UAD, what, what's it called? The UAD time machine color box thing. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. This feels like what that should have been. And the fact that we're getting it for free inside of this Logic update is an absolute game changer. So I'm really happy about this. And the other feature that I'm super happy about is the fact that we can now use our external sims and our external hardware so much easier. So before, if you wanted to bounce down your external sim, if you send a MIDI to it, you had to root it and then you had to do an input and then have it record it back in. Now they've gotten rid of all of that. Well, they haven't gotten rid of it. You can still do it. But you have the external instrument which you can use, which is already communicating in the background to make it so that when you now just hit B, enter. It's now bouncing in real time. My hardware synth, my Moog grandmother, sending it out, recording it back in, made it so much easier, made it so much smoother. And then I've got it there. And the same with hardware. If I have this baseline, for example, and I want to send it out to my fatso. Then in the exact same way, once I've got it like that, I just hit B, bounce. I can set it to include the tail, bypass the plugins, whatever. Just click enter. And it's just going to do it automatically in the background before any buses, before anything like that. And it's just going to print it and put it back in. This is great for me because things like this enable me to be able to use my hardware much more often. Sometimes when you have to think about the battle of going in and going out, like you can lose the battle psychologically and you end up just not using the hardware piece just because it's a bit fiddly to use. Whereas now I can imagine I'm gonna be using my simps and I'm gonna be using my hardware way more. So I know Studio One had this feature and I really missed it when I moved from Studio One back to Logic, but I'm really happy that this is here as well. So these are my two favorite things. Now, a point I should mention is with the Marquee Tool update, I'm not sure what they did, but I'm really struggling with it because for some reason before, I used to select a region like so, and if I hit backspace, it will just delete it. But when there's a track stack, for some reason, what seems to be happening now is it is giving me the option to just delete it. And when I click enter delete, it's deleting the whole take within the folder rather than just deleting that particular section. So just to expand further on the point I meant about the marquee tools. So the way that I work is when I delete something, I set it to permanently delete because I don't want to be taking up too much storage space on my computers. I just don't have the space for that long term. It adds up a lot. So when I delete, it will delete permanently. So for me, I usually use the marquee tool to select an area. So I will just select here. And then if I hit backspace very quickly, I just go enter. And now look what's happened. It's taken everything away. And if I undo, it's not there because obviously it's permanently deleted. Now, I know they upgraded the marquee tool and I'm not sure what they did exactly, but this is the only thing I absolutely hate about this update because it means I'm now gonna have to find a workaround and maybe not use the marquee tool and just use the scissor tool. Either way, it was something that was really easy for me to do and now it isn't. So just a warning for anyone who's used to using the marquee tool to delete things quite quickly, be careful because I was recording vocals today and I ended up actually losing the vocals and we had to redo them because my workflow and the way I work with my shortcuts wasn't working anymore. So I need to look up what they actually did with the marquee tool exactly and how they changed it and if there's a way that I can adjust it to function how it did before. But other than that, this update some solid things have come. Now, as incredible as Chroma Glow is, I think that this Logic update, I think we was on 10.8 before. If anything, this is 10.9. It's not 11. I feel like Logic felt that the AI thing was really going to be 
like people were going to go crazy about that. But from what I've seen, generally musicians, we're not super keen on the whole AI thing. Like people who are professional musicians or professional producers who pride themselves on being creative, when it comes to like having AI play instruments, essentially what you're doing is you're telling us as a company, you're moving towards musicians no longer being needed. Now it's nowhere near that now, like these AI are nowhere near what musicians can do. And I don't think they ever will be because of the human feel, but it is an interesting point to make because as a company that's making DAWs for musicians and for creatives, you're pushing, not an agenda, that sounds too political, but you're pushing an angle which ultimately is taking jobs away from us. So rather than getting a bass player to come in and play something or getting a drummer to play something, just use AI, it's fine. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I like that, actually, that approach. And I don't know whether I'm just a bit old fashioned and this is the new wave, this is the new age, this is just how it is and how it's going to be. But music's still very much a human experience and a form of human expression. The way one drummer plays drums to the way another person plays drums, that's two completely different feels. Now, of course, it can be expensive and you might not have the budget. And you might just want to have, you know, ideas down, just a quick little drum pattern to get a little vibe going. But is it PS5? Are we trying to create a PlayStation console? Are we trying to create a gaming console? Or are we trying to better music? As a company, this I'm talking to Apple now, as a company, are you trying to make your software to sell more versions of Logic Pro? Or are you trying to make your software to enhance the creativity and to encourage people to develop the skills, the musicianship, so that they could make unique art? Now, I don't mean to come across as someone who, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm talking down to people who aren't as great at playing. But we still need to value musicianship. And if you're not great at playing, fair enough. But connect with a friend who is great at playing. Now all of a sudden there's the community aspect of music that's been involved because where you lack, that person can pick up. But if we're just going to sit here and sit in our rooms, our studios that most of the time don't have windows and get the AI to play everything for us, the, where is the community aspect of this? Am I just crazy? What do you think about the whole AI thing? Let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Alex Elliott. If you like this kind of content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.